Today, we're at the huge Inca site of Ollante Tambo at the northern end of the Sacred Valley of Peru. Ollante Tambo was largely created by the Inca, but it'll be clear in this video that the Inca discovered a much more ancient megalithic site and that they built around the megalithic structures. We'll also see evidence of catastrophic damage that happened here far before the time of the Inca. Now this is a purely Inca construction. It was made for the Virgins of the Sun who were the highest level of the feminine aspect in Inca society. And this is an Inca building. However, this lintel was recycled from the older megalithic structures and that lintel and that lintel. You see the rest of the construction is quite crude. The Inca were masters at the movement of water and that's why their agricultural expertise was so incredibly advanced, much more so than Europe at the time. And as we see this other water feature that runs 365 days a year, it's actually a stream created by the Inca and its origin is one of the Andes snow-capped mountains. So the water is freezing cold even after all of this distance from that mountain. Now we're coming up to a fountain that the Inca altered. The original fountain itself, here you see again the Inca construction, then the superior older work, the Inca put the channel in the top of it, and more uh, Inca work. Again, freezing cold water coming down from one of the Andes, quite possibly the Andy mountain called Chikong. And then as we walk across this tiny bridge and up these Inca period steps, we come to the massive agricultural terracing system constructed by the great Inca civilization. And here we see one of the massive staircases constructed by the Inca. Contrary to popular belief, there was no Inca empire. It was a confederation of states. And this is an intriguing feature that I believe the Inca found. And they altered it for a different function. The original function is unknown. But what they did do is they cut this little channel there so that during winter solstice a shadow is cast into that. And so here we see an Inca wall and a much older megalithic work. Some say this is a quarry of some kind, but the stone taken from there has not been found. And then we see megalithic elements that have been arranged in recent times, original location likely from this area. And we are approaching what is called the Temple of the Condor. Now again, Inca wall on the left, but then these finely hewn blocks are from a much older construction. Again, it appears that there was catastrophic damage here of some kind. It's not that the Spanish came and took it apart, but it looks like it literally was hit by a cataclysmic event. Some aspects of the wall or walls are still intact, but then other parts are here in no particular order. And this staircase, constructed out of older blocks from the megalithic period, 
and the Inca construction with a lintel again from a megalithic structure. And once again, the Inca period water channel that may be much older, it's unknown, but this water is channeled from the mountain to agriculture. And now walking away from the Temple of the Condor, we see another aspect of Oyente Tambo in the background, and that is where the Temple of the Sun is located. So we're now climbing up a staircase. Again, you see a water channel. Very intelligent design by the Inca in order to keep people's feet dry and also to channel water towards agriculture. And these are the massive terraces built by the Inca. Each one is at least 12 feet tall, and here one is being used in an experiment to see how efficient the Inca agricultural system worked. Again, massive walls. These are some of the largest terraces or andene in the Inca world. And now it's time to climb an Inca staircase and head upwards towards the Temple of the Sun and so-called Temple of the Sun. The, um, it was named that by the Inca, but its original function at this point is unknown. So we're up on the highest level. And now we start walking on this quite narrow Inca staircase system and trail, eventually reaching the Temple of the Sun. You can see the agriculture still functioning here after hundreds if not thousands of years. And we're at the dizzying heights, so we can look down again at the town of Oyente Tambo. And this shows you how precipitous this high area is. So now the camera is scanning up towards the megalithic Temple of the Sun and more massive Inca constructions. The path up here gets even narrower as you can see barely clinging um, to the rock face. And an Inca construction, the town of Oyente Tambo, terracing, and now you can see some of the huge megalithic blocks we'll be studying. Along the way, we see these beautifully shaped stones almost completely submerged in the soil. Strange that they haven't been properly excavated. And here are some of the large granite blocks that once made up the Temple of the Sun. You can see here that the Inca reconstructed this wall using some of the megalithic blocks and then filling in with smaller stones. And there you can see one of the megalithic blocks partially submerged in the ground as if it was thrown a distance and basically buried itself. This event would have happened thousands upon thousands of years ago. And now we're getting into even larger stones. Again, remember, it's granite. It's a pinkish granite and it's not local. This massive wall of six stones and these shims which likely were used for earthquake proofing because if you have huge blocks right next to another, each other, they can crack. But these shims were actually able to move to some degree reducing 
the power of any earthquake, and earthquakes are very common in the Cusco Sacred Valley area. Also note the surface, almost as if it's been troweled like a slab of butter. Lost ancient high technology, most likely. And then you see the bedrock, which is not the granite, and more of these large blocks of the pink granite. And curiously, we see what is called a keystone cut, supposedly made to hold the stones together with bronze clasps. And again, the sheer scale of these huge granite blocks that come from the mountain in the middle of the frame in the background. That is the quarry across the valley. So the question, of course, is how could huge blocks like this be moved and how could they be so precisely put together like this by a Bronze Age culture? Clearly the work is older by a sophisticated culture and here we can actually see <clears throat> one of the possible cuts. The technology used was not a simple saw but it was a very even tool that was able to cut through the stone. Some would say laser, but that's unlikely as lasers tend to melt stone. It could have been a sound tool or vibrational tool of some kind that was able to create this very nice flat surface and quite even cut about the thickness of a credit card. So now we approach the great wall you can see the preciseness of the work. But then, when we go to the side, it's likely that the Inca reconstructed this wall because you have the huge pieces and then filler of smaller pieces of stone. So again, likely an Inca reconstruction of something that was destroyed by a massive ancient cataclysm. And this piece is not in its original position because you see the complexity of it. Why would it be sitting there by itself? It likely was part of a higher structure. And then this shows you the precision of the flatness of the surface of a multi-ton block. Also, many of the surfaces are peeling, almost like skin falling off. This is not how granite breaks down. Granite tends to be like a sugar cube in that it crumbles eventually, but it doesn't peel off. This looks more like intense heat struck the surface and caused the surface to destabilize. And as we look down, again we see massive blocks almost completely buried in the ground. The standard story by academics is that the Inca never finished the project, but it's more likely that a cataclysm blew much of it up. And in this final aspect, we are going to enter this gateway, which again is megalithic with intriguing knobs protruding from the surface and Inca repair on top. Again, we see the bedrock, which is very unstable, almost like a shale, and then the beautiful, hard, and even pink granite. Now, at one time, this side was also a wall, as you can see by the foundation pieces and three-dimensional locking in of the stone. And again, we see beautiful megalithic polygonal work and crude repair. None of this repair has been done in modern times. And finally, we see that these 
joints are almost perfect. In some places, you can't fit a human hair in the complex joinery. My thanks to Cliff and Stella from Australia for allowing me to guide them. Cliff is an engineer and he was completely blown away at what he saw. And so now, with my wife Irene there, it's time to leave Oyente Tambo. But of course we will return many more times because there's so much still to learn at this beautiful, ancient gem of Peruvian culture. I wonder where this stone once rested in its original place. So these are related books at Amazon.com. A Brief History of the Inca from Rise Through Rain to Ruin. Inca Before the Spanish Conquest. Lost Ancient Technology of Peru and Bolivia. And Aftershock, the ancient global cataclysm that erased much of human history.